Hello everyone, this is April with a video about how to use conferences in Canvas, also known as Big Blue Button. This is the Canvas equivalent to a Teams Meet Now and offers the ability to chat within the meeting for secondary teachers who wish to use that feature. In order to cover all the features of a Canvas conference, this video is rather lengthy. I do recommend watching this video in its entirety before using Big Blue Button for the first time. But after that, I've created a table of contents of sorts to help you quick reference certain features. So feel free to skip ahead to these timestamps if you just need to review. There are pros and cons to using Canvas conferences, and I want you to be informed before making the decision to try it. First, the pros. There is a public chat available, but it's important to note it's only available during the conference. Once the conference ends, there's no going back to the chat. That may actually be really good news for some of you. There's also a built-in multi-user whiteboard for collaboration. I'll cover that feature a little later in this video. And you can share a presentation like a PowerPoint without having to share your screen and you maintain the full use of big blue button annotation tools. It's pretty cool. The cons include a private chat feature, which we recommend that you turn off immediately. And I'll show you how to do that as soon as you start the conference. Which leads me to another con, you cannot set any of the permissions prior to the start of a meeting. It's easy enough to do once you're in, but you'll need to be sure that this is a part of your startup routine before a lot of students join you in the meeting. And finally, any videos that you share during the meeting will not actually show up in the recording of the meeting. So those videos would need to be shared separately for students who are watching the meeting recording later. To set up a meeting, you'll visit the Conferences tab within your Canvas course. Note, this option is not visible to students on the left, and that's okay. I'll cover how to share the meeting link with your students. We'd like to keep that left-hand navigation clean and consistent with home and modules only across all secondary courses in EMS ISD. First, give the conference a name. It might be helpful to list the date in the title. Next, you'll choose whether or not you want the option to record the meeting. You can select no time limit if you plan to use the meeting all day, which I kind of recommend instead of starting a new conference every period. And I'll cover a little later in this video how you can, quote, lock down the meeting when you cannot be in there, like passing periods or conference period, lunch, etc. At the bottom, you'll see that the default is to invite all course members. If you uncheck this box, you can select individual student names within your course. This can be helpful for a small group discussion or if you need to meet with your SPED kids one on one, but I don't recommend trying to select each period students for individual class conferences. Finally, check the box at the bottom to remove all course observer members. This will prevent parent observers of your course from getting a notification of the conference and crashing your class meeting. Now, I didn't put this on the con slide, but I do kind of consider it a con just because it's kind of annoying. Each time you join a big blue button conference, you're asked how you want to join the audio. I would just select the microphone each time because you can always mute yourself once you're in and I would tell your students to do this too. Then it asks you to do an echo test and you just click the thumbs up. This also happens every time you enter a breakout room or return from a breakout room, so it can be a bit tedious. And yes, you heard that right, folks. Big Blue Button has breakout rooms. Stay tuned for more details. When you begin a Big Blue Button conference, the very first thing you will want to do is click the cogwheel to manage users, lock viewers, and lock private chat messages. While we're here, other options you can control are whether or not attendees can share their webcam, their microphone, participate in public chat, or view others in the list. You can customize these however you wish, but I'll cover a little later why it might be handy to lock down everything and click apply. Now let's go over some user settings. A square indicates a presenter and a circle designates an attendee or a student. Right now, we're both muted. If I unmute, it turns green. This is the public chat area. You can post messages to the whole class and students can respond. 
Even though private chat is disabled for student to student, it is important to note that students can still use private chat to communicate with the teacher. This will be helpful for those students who may be a little too shy to type in the public chat area. When a user clicks on their name here, they can set their status. For example, you can ask a quick question to check for understanding and say, give me a thumbs up or a thumbs down or a smiley face or a frowny face. Once everyone has had a chance to respond, the teacher can use the cogwheel to clear all status icons. Under this cogwheel, you also have the ability to mute all users, mute all users except the presenter, this could be handy if another teacher or student is currently presenting, and the one that is sure to be popular, create breakout rooms. You choose how many breakout rooms, the time limit. You can allow it to randomly assign students to a room, or even allow students to choose their own breakout room. Or you can drag and drop their name into an assigned room. Once you click Create, students will automatically be taken to their breakout room. As the presenter, you can click Breakout Rooms and see the students in each room. You can join a room to monitor on-task behaviors. This clock will count down the time limit until breakout rooms expire. Once time expires, everyone is automatically brought back to the big conference. If you'd like to end the breakout sooner, click End All Breakout Sessions to bring everyone back manually. Now let's cover the presentation area. If you enabled recording when setting up the conference, you'll click Start Recording here at the top. Under the three dots on the left, there are more meeting options to customize your conference experience. Each big blue button conference begins with this slide presentation. The second slide is a built-in whiteboard. This is great for trying out the multi-user whiteboard feature. It's a fully collaborative space where multiple users can type, draw, etc. Once everyone has had a turn or you're ready to clean the slate, turn off multi-user whiteboard and delete all annotations. Under the plus sign here at the bottom, you can share a presentation. Simply find the presentation on your computer and upload. Note, you still have use of the annotation tools while sharing a presentation. Pretty cool. Let's say you build in a question in your presentation. You can click the plus sign and start a poll and have them answer A, B, C, or D. Once everyone has answered, you can publish the polling results and they'll show up right here on the presentation. And once everyone has reviewed the results, you can delete it, just like an annotation. Finally, under the plus sign, you can share an external video. Simply grab the URL for the video you want to show and share. It shows up right here in the presentation area without any of the ads or noise on the sides of the screen. When you're ready to end the conference, you can click these three dots and end the meeting, or you can revisit the conference pages on Canvas to end the conference. However, this will end it for good. There is no rejoining a concluded conference. So what I recommend instead is to leave the conference open all day. But if there's times when you're not going to be there, like a passing period or conference or lunch, remember that little cogwheel and the lock viewers options I referenced earlier? Revisit this screen and lock all the options on this page. So while you're away, students can still join the conference but they won't be able to share their webcam, use their microphone, chat, or even see if anyone else is in the room. They'll simply be able to sit there and wait for you to unlock everything, except private chat, remember, when you get back to the conference. Now you can feel comfortable walking away from the meeting for a bit and not have to start a new one seven times a day. 
To share out the join link for a big blue button conference, visit the conference pages in Canvas, right click on the join button and copy link address. Next, you can create an announcement and paste the link with instructions to join for that day. Or you can create a page within a module with the information. Choose whichever way your students are used to finding your Teams meeting link. As a last resort, if this proves to be too many steps, you can enable conferences to be visible for students, but we do ask that you truly use this as a last resort. To enable, within your Canvas course, click Settings, then Navigation, click the three dots next to Conferences, and choose Enable. You must then scroll down to Save. It is imperative you do not enable any other features in order to maintain consistency across all secondary courses in EMS ISD. I hope you enjoy giving Canvas conferences a try. If you have any questions or concerns, please email its at ems-isd.net or visit us in office hours at www.emsisd.com slash itoffice.